Well, it's raining in lovely Southern California, and fortunately, it, I was gonna. I'm doing it. I'm gonna do this video regardless, but I don't care. I have a write-up on our on the blog post on how to put a nitrous kit in your truck. I mentioned it in the about Casper video, so I figured I'd be good on my word and do it, even though it's raining. No, there is no kit hooked up. I have not put my parts in it. I do not have them yet, but I'm just going to show you how I was taught how to do it. I'm going to show you very quick, and then the rest of the video will be done inside. So first thing you need to do is get this bracket out of the way. 13 millimeter bolts hold this down, and you can remove this. If you have a ghetto TCM, get it out of the way. Next thing you need to do is pull your fuse box off. The next thing you need to do is make sure that this relay is in and functions the way it's supposed to. There's your fog lamp. As you can see, it says fog or F. That's what you want in. Make sure it works. Next thing you do I didn't even know that water gets in here. Hold on. Oh, I'm getting a free wash, so. Next thing you gotta do is pull the fuse box cover up. Now this is done on an 05, so 2001 through 2007 LBZs will be similar. It's just, I think the 0102s have certain, certain things in a different spot. Next thing you need to do is peel back this tab and lift up the fuse box. You want just the fuse panel showing like this. Now when we lift this thing up, it's going to be on a hinge, so don't force it. You're going to pull some wires. Now I have a conversion, so it's going to be a little more tricky, but the concept still applies. What we're looking for is this green uh, junction plug right here. And if you look right there, you see two green wires coming out of that one pin, right? Well, that's where you're going to do some of the modifications. As you can see, McRat already T-tapped it. This is where your nitrous trigger is going to come in. You want to trace these wires here outside the fuse box, somewhere like right in here, in this little bulkhead, this bulk of wires here. You can see them already. What you're also going to have to do is make sure that all the electronics, this, you need to make sure this fuse, oh, it's a 15 amp, you need this fuse and this relay to function. And then... When you do your, I'm going to put this back on because I don't need it anymore, and plus it's getting wet. Next thing you need to do, a lot of this can be done inside now because it's too wet out here. But your trigger, your trigger circuit is already here in the cab. There you go. As long as your horn circuit functions, your nitrous will function too. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to allow the, the horns to function when you're done. If you still street drive your truck, you want to be able to put the horns back so you can drive it on the street. So I'm going to show you what parts you need. I'm basically going to describe the write-up a little better than what we have or than what I have up there. I need to do it with a video. But, um, but note one thing. If you do not know what you're doing, if you're unsure, about this method, if you don't feel comfortable, if you think I'm, my method's full of shit, don't do it and keep your trap shut. This is how I do it. This is how McGrath's done it. This is how a lot of guys, or a couple of guys out here, have done it, and they go faster than you, possibly. So it works for my truck. It may not. It's not for everybody though. If you're not sure about it, don't do it. The parts are very easy to get. Plumbing is the most difficult part but it's all about bottle location, um, where you're putting, you know, putting the bottle, where your solenoid's gonna go, and stuff like that. So, I'm gonna go back to my computer and I'm gonna show you on the computer screen, I don't have my screen capture stuff set up yet, but I'm gonna show you the parts, where you put stuff, how you do it, how you test for it, blah, 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 because it's kinda raining and I wasn't, you know, I was hoping it rain a little later, but my camera's all nice and wet, so I'm gonna dry this thing off and then I'm going to show you how to I'm going to show you how to do all this stuff. It's quite easy. Okay, I have the screen capture stuff up, so I'm going to use this for audio. So basically this is I kind of showed you the wrong screen first, but this is kind of what I'm trying to hold in my left hand. 
So basically, this is the blog post we're referring to. If you want to install Nitrous, this is how you do it. Um, I'm going to go over the, the, this complete list in detail, kind of how I did in the video or the segment earlier. So we're going to go over the parts list. First thing you're going to need is a weather pack kit. You can buy those on eBay. It's good to have it around the shop. The next thing you need is a 200 amp continuous draw starter relay, the three post self grounding one. Um, even though it says here, although you'll be grounding the You'll be grounding this to the firewall along with the solenoid. Uh, it's available on Amazon. I'll show you in a minute. This is the part number right here for, for the solenoid that you can get away with. 18020NOS. It's a 78,000th orifice uh, solenoid. Also available on Amazon. You can buy it there. You need a 10 amp mini fuse holder, which you can buy at your auto parts store. Not the Adafuse one, the one that goes in line in your circuit. Same thing with a 20 amp fuse, a fuse uh, holder. Um, you need the heavy gauge one for for this application and I'll show you why. I'm gonna go overkill here but I would say do 10 gauge primary wire for your for your power to your relay. Um, you're also gonna need grounding wire as well. 14 gauge primary wire this will be your trigger circuit ring terminals to fit all posts of your relay you can get those at the at most electrical stores you need some terminals that fit 10 gauge wire shrink tubing for all your soldering joints it's recommended to solder yes so you don't have it's a better connection and we're not going over the plumbing just yet and th but we will uh, the tools you will need are a 13 millimeter socket 10 millimeter socket wire cutters strippers uh, soldering iron and solder Terminal crimping tools for the weather packs, or for um, uh, terminal crimp tools, and you need the, I don't know why I put that there, but you need the weather pack terminal crimping tool. I think those were the same thing. So first what we're going to do is, yes, we identified the horn is going to be your, your trigger. So um, I'm just going to read it out loud too. First, you'll be obviously blah, 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 blah. The way we're going to configure this system is... We're going to allow the nitro system to be plugged in when you want it to be and unplugged when you are not using it. So we're going to use the horn. We'll be modifying the existing horn relay circuit to allow our nitro system to be plugged in without the horns being activated at the same time because that's going to be very embarrassing. It's going to allow you to unplug the system when you are done. Plug your horns back in and use the horn button as it was tended to be used. I took pictures and labeled stuff as best I could so that's kind of why the video is here to help. Um, next, we're going to go mount this relay. This is the relay I'm talking about. This is just an old school starter, rel starter solenoid slash relay that General Motors, Chrysler, Ford, mainly Ford, not this style, but General Motors has used this, starter, this style uh, relay or solenoid relay, whatever this thing is, for many, 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 many years and it can hold up to 200 amps so as you can see here it's a 200 amp continuous draw we're not even remotely using 200 amps but it's the purpose of this is a heavy duty relay we don't have to worry about melting wires as you can see there's your trigger that's going to be coming from the horn circuit or the output of the horn relay under the fuse box one of these is going to go to your nitrous solenoid the other one's going to come from the battery box the best place to get your battery power is from the alternator box um, because the alternator charges directly to that terminal and you will probably actually you will probably you'll have less chance of a voltage drop causing your system not to work because this is the one system you want to work a hundred percent of the time electronically plumbing it's give hit or miss but as far as the electrical portion you want this thing to turn on when you tell it to and I mentioned here, um, where did I mention? Uh, obviously, if you don't know what you're doing, do not attempt this yourself. Have someone that does know what they're doing help you with this. I'm not responsible for something happens, as this is an educational tutorial for an aftermarket track only option. Please use extreme caution, especially when dealing with nitrous. It's very deadly at times. You know, if you have a bottle blow up or you open the bottle and you can get hurt so be very careful um, before you go any further I should have put this farther up um, 
if I put it in here okay I will go to that further down but the first thing you need to do is okay we are going to go cover that so the relay fits as you can see here the relay fits perfectly in this little section it's under the firewall right by the hydro boost you're going to use one of these mounting points here I use this one because it's oh, farther away but you're going to get a General Motors 10 millimeter, like the one that you use on the cylinder, uh, the ground strap over here. You're going to get another nut and mount it to here with a washer and lock washer just to be safe. And you're going to put a sheet metal screw here in the, in the firewall to, to mount the other one tab. This tab here is going to have the stud for the firewall in it. This one's going to be mounted with a sheet screw or a HVAC screw or whatever because you want the stud you want a stud for grounding. If you have to cut the stud down, go for it. Because uh, as you can see here, the stud's a little long. Note to self, if you're cutting these studs down, put a nut on it and cut it with like, if you're using a grinder, be very careful. If you're going to grind this stud down to reduce the size, um, put a nut in it first, like thread a nut onto it, cut your excess threads, and back the nut off. It'll the nut will actually clean the threads where you cut, so it'll go on easy. And try to cut as straight as possible. So this is where I'm going to mount mine right here. Um, I'm going to take this plastic one off and put. Actually, keep the plastic one because you can use it as a beauty cover, so you can hide all your ugliness. So the relay, this thing is going to mount to that spot, and you're going to grab the this post, this flange right here will be used to mount with your be used will be mounting to the stud on the firewall you'll be using that stud to ground the solenoid or that stud to the cylinder head ground strap on the firewall the reason why is that the guaranteed ground already the batteries ground to the block the block is attached to this or the cylinder heads are attached to the block and the head bolts or head studs are attached to the block the head studs are touching the aluminum heads and therefore it is grounding through a ground strap to the firewall itself so it's a good ground you can verify that ground is good with a test light and a multimeter that ground needs to have a hundred percent connectivity at all times if it doesn't get grounded once you got a problem and your nitro system won't fire when it's supposed to and it won't do it's just very 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 irritating when it doesn't work so choose a good ground I choose the cylinder head strap which is what this flange right here will be used for it's because what you're gonna do is you're gonna have a ring terminal on the top part of the flange that goes from here over to the cylinder head ground strap which is located over here you're also gonna mount your when we get down to it you'll see why we have it that way so keep in mind that one of the mounting posts of the relay will be needed to be needed will, will, the, 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 my stuttering points of the relay will need to be grounded to the cylinder head strap farther to the left of the hydro boost reason we are doing this is because we are going to be grounding the nitrous solenoid to the same spot we do this to ensure that both are going to give be, to be engaged when given power we will be testing this later on with a multimeter and a test light prior to the solenoid being hooked up very important on anything you do you test electronically or electrically always test your circuit with a multimeter or a test light before you hook the actual thing up whether it's a nitrous circuit a air compressor circuit LED lighting light bar doesn't matter you always test it so you don't burn out your product that way if you know like say if you burn out a LED light bar or a nitrous solenoid you can say that the solenoid was bad already that way you know they can't say well you burned it up I don't have any picks of mounting the solenoid for step two, but I will update when we do. Basically, you'll need to mount the solenoid as close to your relay as possible. This prevents a voltage droppage uh, to in will share full current going to your solenoid. So, to buy the solenoid, I'm just going to show you here on their website, on uh, Holly's website, because this is basically a Holly product. Um, you're going to go here. This is the part number. It's cheaper on Amazon, by the way, but I'm only showing you because that's what you're gonna need you're gonna need this bracket or make your own you're gonna need to mount you're gonna need to mount the, uh, the solenoid somehow now step three we need to wire the nitrous solenoid to your relay this part's pretty simple 
you'll need to put ring terminals on both wire ends. One will be going to the output side because I believe it's an it's a it's an either or it's an AC. Will go to the output side of your relay. The other will be going to your grounding post, which is the which is the mounting bolt that is being grounded to the cylinder head strap, which is this one here. Your ground for your solenoid and the ground from your cylinder head strap will go to here, which is mounted to where the nitrous relay is, which is going to help ground it. Even though it's a self-grounding unit, it's better to have it all grounded together. It's just a theory I have, and it's been proven right. Wiring your relay to constant power, you will need the 10 gauge wire and the large fuse holder from your parts list for this step. What you're doing is you're going from your alternator box, which is located on the power steering pump, and you're going to take that 17 millimeter nut off, and you're going to have to find a ring terminal that fits 10 gauge wire and fits that uh, stud. You can go find it at any electrical parts store, they'll have it. And all you do is you just, you can, it's, this is, I'm not illustrating this in this right now because one, I don't have it. Two, this is kind of a cut to size. Run it as neatly as possible and kind of out of the way so it doesn't, you know, there's, it doesn't affect, interfere with anything. Because you're going to run it to, so figure this is the firewall side. You're going to run it to one of these two terminals. It doesn't matter which one. But you're going to run it to one of these two terminals. You need to find a term, a ring terminal that fits over this stud that also fits 10 gauge wire you also need a terminal that fits the wires coming out of the solenoid they're pretty small I think they're 12 to 14 gauge or something like that they're pretty good size wire um, there's your amperage draw right here oh it is DC they tell you how to they'll then they tell you which one's which but remember this will remember this amperage we'll be referring to that later So as I stated, you're going to run a constant hot from the alternator box to one post of your relay. And you're going to test power at the relay. Make sure that you have good power there. Now, you're going to test with a test light. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to ground the test light or your multimeter using alligator clips to the ground post on the cylinder head. That's where you're getting your ground for your relay and your nitrous solenoid. So we need to test from there. Testing from the battery is pointless because we're not grounding to the battery. We're grounding to the firewall, uh, the cylinder head strap. So put your multimeters ground or your test light ground on the firewall and um, test all your positive circuits with your test light and multimeter. To get, to get voltage. You're looking for anything 12 volts and above. Now we're going to go to wire the trigger circuit. For this step, we need to do what I showed you to remove the fire or to remove the battery bracket, the, the fender well brace or the fender brace to the firewall. We also need, you know, there's two, there's four 13 millimeter bolts, two there, two there. Those will come out and then you'll gain access to this portion of the fuse box cover. To remove the fuse box cover, this side's facing the engine. So there's two tabs here, or two slots, that are being held in by two, or two, um, two tabs that are elevated to hold this in. All you do is just pry down here and, and just slide this thing off. You will be seeing this. This is what you'll be exposed to when you open up, take, when you take off the cover, you'll be, ac you'll be ac accessing the fuse panel itself. This is what we want. Next, like I showed you, you peel back this little tab and lift the fuse box up. Now, these two green wires are for both horns, left and right. You will want to trace these to a spot which is out here, outside the fuse box. This is That is where you will, will cut both and insert your weather pack connections. Your female connection will be on the, on the two coming out of the fuse box. One male will be on the two going to both horns. The second male connection will be going to your relay mounted on the firewall. This post right here, the small post, that's where your other male is going to be coming from. This terminal will be hooking up to the factory horn relay output. The connection going to the relay should have an inline 10 amp mini fuse installed. 
if something happens, we want this inline fuse to blow before the one in the box, which is technically this fuse right here, or one of these two fuses. We do not want this to blow. It just makes it easier to diagnose. It doesn't matter if it blows, just you gotta replace the fuse. But it's easier to diagnose because where I'm mounting my fuses, I'm putting my inline fuse here and on one of these. And I'm putting my inline fuse for the constant hot circuit on the alt on the constant power side. Reason why, and this is a good reason, if something happens to where this relay shorts out for some stupid reason, and you're and you, it's, it's, it decides to internally short, it's happened. So what you want, what you don't want to do is have it unfused because if it shorts out, it's going to constantly draw and it's going to drain your battery down so quick or it's going to do some damage and probably melt. So what I do is I'm gonna put my inline fuse on the incoming power side from the alternator box. It's gonna be like a 20 amp fuse. Why? Because it only pulls 10 amps. You give it a 10 amp, you give it some 10 amp leeway. Because, where we go? If this is pulling too much power, it'll blow a 20 amp fuse and the nitrous solenoid will not be allowed to work. Therefore, you saved yourself, you, you, caught, you basically will kill two birds with one stone. If the nitrous solenoid pulls too much, this won't get affected. If, if the nitrous solenoid is not working and gets shorted out and pulls too much, this obviously won't get hurt, so it'll blow this fuse over here. This is just transmitting power from here to here. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's under 200 amps. So if, it, if, it pull, if your nitrous solenoid is pulling 20-something amps, it'll blow the fuse. It'll blow the fuse right here, which is perfect. That's what you want. So you, all you do is just find the short or change the solenoid. That way, it doesn't melt your your relay to the ground, or you know, it doesn't run away. If you know, because if these do fail, they fail. They'll either stuck open or they'll just melt. They'll just melt these wires. That's why we have these are the 10 amp mini ones that I, I these are comes in a pack of th three. You know, good price. So just, get, just buy this one or go to your local auto parts store. But I got these ones because they're thick. Um, they're on the way. These are thick gauge wire with a big uh, regular fuse, with a regular blade fuse. So this is, a uh, you know, some heavy-duty stuff. Where I'm going to mount it is my fuse, my links, my fusible links are going to go here and here. That way the two fuses are just right next to each other. No big deal. That way you don't have to go to you know the front of the, the all the way to the front or the all the way to the fuse box and check one and go to the alternator box. You just go to the relay and oh look fuse blown. Imagine that. That makes it easy. So now that we peeled it up and did all that, this is what the, this this relay needs to be installed in this orientation for it to function. This is your fog light uh, relay location. This method of installation. The way I'm the way I'm doing it ensures that you do not have to remove relays. That way, you actually have the use of your factory horns. So when you do daily when you do drive your truck on the street for some reason, um, or if your truck's a daily driver and you just want to be have fun and spray your tow rig like I do, you know you want to put the horns back. All you do is you go find all the plugs will be located over here somewhere. All you gotta do is just reach down there and plug them in. Or unplug your horns, plug your nitrous in, and purge it, and you'll be good to go. You just leave all the stuff intact. As long as you're not rolling around with your nitrous bottle hooked up, they can't do uh, the law enforcement can't do anything to you because you have no intention to go race or anything like that. Because there's no bottle. You can have it there, but you just can't have it hooked up because you technically can't use it. And for better safety, you unplug it. You unplug your system entirely so your horns function. That way. One, no one can find your switch. Of course, now that people will see this video, they'll, they'll want to find it. But who cares? This is just the easiest way to do it. You don't have to go buy a, you know, if you want a progressive kit, that's your call. But if you just want a single shot, I spray all the way down the track. So this is the easiest way to do it. And that's the end of the pictures. So verif now this is the most important part. We're going to verify the circuit. Note one thing. Forgot to mention this in the in the beginning of the video. You need to verify that your horn circuit functions. What I mean is, if your horns work, 
then you're good to go. If your horns do not work, you need to diagnose the issue first if you're going to do it this way. You need to diagnose if your horns are the problem or your horn circuit is the problem or you just have a blown fuse. If you keep blowing fuses, you need to find your short um, before you do anything. If your short is at the horns, then that's not a problem. But you want to make sure that when you remove the horns from your equation, from the circuit, the factory circuit, you won't be blowing any fuses or melting anything. So if your horns function as they are, if I can go out to my truck right now and honk the horn and you can hear the horns beeping or if you honk, if you lock your truck and the horns honk, that means you're good to go. Um, you don't need to worry about anything else. Word of caution, make sure your nitrous is disconnected before, uh, make sure your nitrous is disconnected if you want to use the honk feature of your clicker uh, because when you lock the truck, with the horn, you'll engage the nitrous relay. So that's why I'm doing. We're doing it this way, so you can so you can literally unplug it and plug your horns back in. If unless it's a dedicated truck, or if you don't have the horns set up to honk, I do. I always make sure my nitrous is unplugged just for safety purposes. You'll learn in a lot of my tutorials. I'm about making sure it's a safe way to do it. I'm you know it's one thing to go fast, but if you don't have the safety equipment to back it up, and if you're not protected, you know. I would recommend not doing it unless your safety is in mind because I've been I've been in desert racing before I've seen a lot of people get killed over stupid stuff uh, I've seen a lot of drag racing accidents I've seen a lot of off-roading accidents due to the lack of safety equipment they try to cheap out or you know whatever the case may be safety is very important a lot of people are seeming to forget that lately you know it's your life isn't worth you know risking over a few pounds of safety that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard you know people taking weight out of their trucks you know you can take some but if you start taking structural rigidity out of it to save a few pounds I mean come on it's one thing to remove a heavy cross brace and replace it with a lighter stronger material that's one thing that's okay it'd be stronger but don't leave it out altogether because it's an extra if you put one back in it's five pounds five pounds doesn't make a damn difference your your life is more important. That's just all. That's just what I gotta say on that one. I'll be adding more when the I'll be doing a part two when the kit is arriving. You know, and when it and when it stops raining, it's raining pretty good. But um, I'll do a part two when the time comes. So if you if you if this makes any sense or it doesn't make any sense, I mean. You can. Um, I'll put. Our, I'll put my email address in the description. You can email me. I'll try to answer any questions I can. This kit's proven. It just is a cheap way of doing it. If you don't want to do it, then don't do it. Just watch for fun. Don't. You know. Stupid comments get deleted because it's not. That's not what these videos are for. They're educational. If people want to learn and you're coming and making stupid comments, you're not going to be welcome back. Just. Just saying. Email will be in the description. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, oh, I forgot about plumbing. If you want to do your go, if you want to do your plumbing stuff, go on Summit Racing, and if you are looking for pre-done braided hose, this is what we use. So you basically want to find the fittings that fit your nitrous solenoid right here. So these are eighth-inch MPT fittings. So however you do it, it doesn't matter. Whatever jet you choose, just do your homework on nozzles and stuff like that, and. Um, if you whatever size lines you need or fittings you can go here summit racing usually has it a really good price like a 14 foot a or dash six which is what I use from the bottle to the relay um, or to the solenoid 80 bucks for pre-done stuff all ready to go so I mean and it's actually Holly brand so it's the same brand as this so I don't see why you just can't buy it. People want to make it themselves. I'd rather have it pre-manufactured because if something bursts, I can just turn it in and get a warranty. As you see here, they have different lengths. Um, you have inches, feet, color. You can do end one, end two, female, male threads. Um, you know, and get a nitrous filter. They're not. It's worth. It's worth the investment. Because you don't know if your nitrous station has a it has a bad bad quality of nitrous or something like that, and you know you never know what you never know what you're going to run into. So 
most of the stuff is on the blog post. I'll put a link in the description too. But if you have any problems, just uh, email me. I'll try to help you any way I can. But uh, this is a tutorial. This isn't. I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just suggesting this is how I do it. And I'm more than happy to help. But don't take my. Don't go out and start saying, "Well, Nate said do it this way." And well, blah, blah, blah. no, 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 no. I'm only showing you how I do things. I'm not telling you how it needs to be done, especially in this one. This is definitely a dangerous thing to be playing with. There are certain things that I will tell you, yeah, you need to do it this way. But even then, most guys that make these videos aren't responsible for your stupidity if, you know, not saying you're stupid. But most guys aren't responsible for the stupidity of their viewers if they do something and they're not educated. And they, well, he said to do it this way. Yeah, you're not educated, so that's your problem. But anyway... If, you're, if you guys do this and you have any problems, again, I'll help any way I could. This is just how I hook up both my trucks. It's very easy. And just, just to show you the price comparison, um, just to show you a price, um, we're going to go into the nitrous. We're going to look up a diesel system. Okay. 700 bucks. Yeah, but that comes with a bottle and plumbing. But... There, it's kind of a complicated kit, in a sense. Um, you know, it comes with the it comes with a bottle and stuff like that. But you know, some of the stuff you don't even need. And plus, yeah, you buy a kit. It may cost a little. This may be the same price as mine. I don't know. I just know I like building my own stuff. But the the fact that you can say that, and you look, it's even almost a, almost a thousand bucks, or I'm sorry, eight hundred bucks. And I was far off, but you can go, you know, you can go buy a bottle. Bottles are only like what a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, so you're probably gonna be four, three, uh, three, four hundred bucks into this system, at least. That's half of what this is, almost more than half. But just to say that you built the system yourself, that's something. And I've, you know, yeah, you learned it from someone else. So did I. But that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing if you, you know, if you learn from someone else. We all have to start somewhere. For a guy, for us that want, you know, for guys that don't know what they're doing or getting into it, have questions, whatever. The mentality of some of these, uh, some of these, quote celebrities on the social media think they're above everything, above everybody, and not have to answer stupid questions, and they, you know, roast you for it. That's not what the sport's about. It never was about that. People seem to get, you know, people get their big egos all in order, and you know, or, or whatever. They think that their their shit don't stink. In reality, it's worse than my Taco Bell diarrhea. But guys like you know guys like me, I like to help. You know, I try. You know, I don't do much work work anymore. But you know, anytime I can sit down and talk to you and message you about stuff, you know, I do have a real job. But anytime I can sit down and spend a few minutes to help, a few minutes of someone's a few minutes sitting down and talking to someone, you'll learn probably a lot. So that's kind of what I'm hoping for. I have, you know, I have some free time here and there to sit down and talk to people, and that's, you know, that's something. Just helping, just helping a guy out with this stuff and getting his truck dialed in the way he wants. That's to me that it makes me feel better at night, knowing that someone did it themselves. Yeah, I helped them, but they technically they assembled it. I just gave them instructions how. That's still doing it yourself. I mean, you didn't go buy a kit and you know not know what's in it. You know, you built your own. It's like working on your own truck. You know, oh, I had a shop to it. Well, yeah, not impressive. I'm more impressed by, I can go to one, I can go up to two different trucks. Guy says, oh, I paid someone to do this. Or next guy, oh, well, I had to do this, this, and this, the all parts I used. I'm more interested in that kind of stuff because that's me. I do all my work myself. I get along with guys that do their own work because we can, you know, they need help. I go over and help them out. I don't have to babysit anybody. I don't have a problem with it. It just makes things a lot easier when it makes it a little more difficult because guys that are do stuff themselves they have their own ways of doing it I'm guilty as charged and people will butt heads but the job gets done a little off topic but a little opinionated ventilating for the afternoon it's raining out here and it's getting it's nice and toasty in here and I gotta do some stuff around the shop but I figured I'd do it drop a quick video real quick on this kit it's very easy to do and I hope you guys get the results out of it that I did. It, it it really works. Now, the size of the solenoid is up to you. If you know you need a bigger one, put a bigger one in. But this is how the electronics of our my system work. You can do whatever you want for plumbing, solenoids, jets, whatever. But this is how the electronics work. And 
you know, I might have to go, I might be going to a bigger solenoid and jetting it down. If you, if you know you're going to be spraying bigger in the future, you can go get the bigger solenoid, the 120 orifice, and you can jet it down. You can always go bigger and jet down. You can't jet up. So keep that in mind. So if you know you're going to go bigger in the future, but you can't, you can't justify it right now, go get a bigger solenoid. Just put, because like this solenoid here, oops, that's not a solenoid, that's a bottle. Or that's a whole system. This solenoid here, um, like this is the I think this is next size up. Yeah, it's the next size up. It's a 125 orifice. If you know you're gonna go bigger, get him. And then if you if you're gonna go bigger, but you can't, you don't have the the fuel and you don't have the fuel for it yet. You can get the bigger one. Or better explain it. If you're gonna be if you're running small fuel now and you want to go bigger fuel later and you know you're gonna need more nitrous but you don't have that setup right now and want to do this only once buy this the bigger one and jet him down to this and then if you want to go bigger you can take the jet out and just run him that's what I that's how I set up a couple different trucks that's all you need you just need to know what you just need to keep in mind. You just need to know and plan your truck's goal out. Even if you do buy this one, you never spray this big. You'll always have the small jet in it. it doesn't matter. It's just how big the orifice is, because you know it's still. You know it's just a bigger inlet and a smaller outlet. That's all it is. Nothing, nothing special, and it's got a bigger amp draw, so you'll definitely be covered. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're gonna if you're gonna be spraying. Just know what, just keep in mind of what you're going to be, plan your truck ahead. If you're going to put bigger injectors in it and bigger turbos and you know a small jet ain't going to clean it up, get the big guy. And if you're running stock injectors for right now or something small and you know you can get away with a 78,000 spray, just run the, the, big, the big solenoid with a small jet. You know, that's easy. Like I said, it's easier to go down in size than it is up with a solenoid. You can go from a 120 to a 78 with a jet. You can't go from a 78 to a 120 that way. So keep that in mind. Hope you guys like this. Uh, be, there'll be more like it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be doing things. I'm gonna try to get myself set up a little better to do better tutorials um, with screen sharing and power uh, with uh, technical information uh, stuff on the screen for you. But this was kind of a half-ass way of doing it right now because of, of what I don't have. But if you have any questions, I don't check messages on YouTube, but email me. I'll get back to you when I could. Um, like I said, I got a full-time job, so it's really hard sometimes. But I'll try to get in touch with you as, as quick as I could. Thank you, guys, and see you soon. It's another ape-like noise with an exit.